Elena Bennett, you are Associate Professor at McGill University and you just gave a talk on opportunities in the Anthropocene. Current trends of increasing consolidation of wealth and power interacting with technology, robotics and advancements in health are prolonging life for elites. How can we consider these in our visions of a good Anthropocene? Well, one of the things that we're doing in our visions of a good Anthropocene is trying to incorporate many diverse and even pluralistic views of what a good Anthropocene means. So to some people, those trends that you just mentioned are good. To some people, those trends that you mentioned maybe aren't good or conflict with things that they want in a good Anthropocene. But what's nice about our process is it allows us to investigate how all of those things play together to create different kinds of positive futures. And much of your research focuses on sustainable resource management and ecosystem services. Are ecosystem services being accounted for on larger scales today? And can you see this concept as being part of those opportunities looking ahead? I think in some ways we're seeing that it is starting to be a concept that's taken into account. So for example, uh, former President Barack Obama um, put in place a, I'm not sure if it was a law or regulation, but a, a basically a mandate to take ecosystem services into account in all government decisions. Doing that in a way that isn't just impact assessment, but is a deep accounting for ecosystem services may take a longer time. But as we have more and more researchers who are working on this place-based efforts to incorporate ecosystem services, the usefulness of the idea and concept, I think, gets transmitted up the line to different scales, and it will start to be accounted for, um, especially as the research gets stronger and we get better at being able to quantify services. Now, in your talk today, you talked about seeds of a good Anthropocene. How do you think that seeds of a good Anthropocene can be best scaled up? And how would a general urban population react, do you think? Yeah, so we are in this project doing a few things. So one is collecting the seeds or basically fringe activities that people are doing now that are intended to bring about a better Anthropocene. And I didn't talk so much about it today, but one of the things we're doing with those is trying to understand why they emerge, where they emerge, when they emerge, how they emerge, and then why some of them scale. So we do see, for example, like transition towns that starts in transition town Totnes. It starts in one place, it's successful, and then it spreads all over the place. So we see other seeds that um, start with one idea, like providing food for a population that doesn't have access to good food, and then it grows into this whole other thing that is not just about people and food, but that's connecting people to people and maybe connecting people to nature. So we're trying to explore with our database how that kind of scaling happens. And we also have been asking our keynote speaker a more personal question. So we would like to know if you practice any sports or if you have a favorite one. That you oh, a favorite. A favorite one is hard, so, but I'll talk about two. So I still am quite an active uh, soccer player, um, which is a lot of fun. I play with a group of women outside of Montreal. Uh, but my new favorite sport after sabbatical in Sweden is swim run, a very Swedish sport of uh, running and swimming long distances in open water and on trails. It's a lot of fun. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Uh, thank you. It's been a pleasure.